God. God brought me through situations and circumstances that killed fear in me. In my little life and in this ministry, we have come to a point where it, it, it was only God. And so I know that the word of God works. Let me tell you something. When you walk with God and see his wonders, it comes to a point where your faith becomes trust. You lose the ability to doubt God. 2006, we were preparing for a crusade. We didn't have much. There was no money. There was no nothing. Yet the Lord gave us the word. Isn't it amazing how when God speaks to you, He speaks as though He has made every provision. He doesn't even give you room to ask questions. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm glad a few people are here. We didn't have money for the transport to and fro. I called the transport people. Karba is there. And a few people are. I called the transport people from Kwangila. I told them, come in the morning. You are coming to take us to Joss. What kind of embarrassment is that? At the word of God. It's left for him to perform it. When you die to yourself, you can trust God to death. I have no reputation to protect again. Therefore, you can. Our fear is as a result of our reputation. What if it does not happen as God said? Who cares? Hallelujah. Right at North Gate, the people gathered where we used to have our Sunday meetings. And everybody was wondering. And I told them, pack the luggages and start loading it in the car. My brothers are here, they will testify. Not one naira. We didn't have one naira. And while they were loading, suddenly, the one who gave the word, according to Jeremiah 1 verse 12, he said, I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform. And suddenly we heard, people just came and began to give. Unbelievers. And we had an amount that was just sufficient to take us. Hallelujah. When we got there, the hotel where we lodged, I, I hadn't paid for it. I told the people, just lodge them before we leave, we will pay. Not one naira. Yet I was preaching, God was confirming His word with signs and wonders. We saw all kinds of strange miracles. There was no, it was a wilderness. Hallelujah. After we finished and everything, we raised some money and cleared the people to go away. I was left with the sound people, about 150,000 to clear up the sound people. I prayed every prayer I knew how to pray. I did every fasting. I did everything. I made an agreement with them, came back to Zaria. They almost locked me at the security office. I came to a point where I said, Lord, my ego was stung, my reputation was stung. I just died to myself. That was the real point of faith. When you come to a point where you lose your reputation, then you can trust God. Supernaturally, God opened the way. And then I learned to trust God. Such that if God speaks to me right now and God tells me, Josh, by this time tomorrow, this and that will happen, I'll say, Lord, I believe you. I don't care. I have come to a point where the word of God is now my eyes. It's my new eyes. I only see reality from God's word. And this is what we have been teaching, friends. This is how to reign in this life. This world is a wicked world full of too many things that can destabilize your faith. If you base your trust in God by the things that are happening or the things that are not happening, you would die like a member. My brother's testimony touched me so much. I remember when he was in the height of this situation. You know what it means to be in debt of 30 million naira. Many of you have not, you don't have an idea. Yet in an instant it goes, come on, God is too faithful. How much do, what see, listen, listen. 
you know sometimes we insult God that's why testimonies are powerful they ignite your faith all the shouting you are shouting at God God you didn't do this it took him seven days to create the heavens and the earth the reason is because we trust men we trust systems and I've told you this again and again if you don't take your eyes away from men you will face an endless war of disappointments in life Bible says I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence come my help anything God cannot do for me let it not be done I hope you know that everything we shout and yell at God for it will only happen when you are alive that God woke you that morning statistics tells us that eight people die every second you are still alive God is interested in your case I'm saying this because this is the last service many of us are going home and when you step home you see all kinds of impossibilities from financial impossibilities your father mother brother sisters and then at that point your faith will now become foolishness the whole trumping and the confession oh i refuse to doubt god's word i refuse to doubt god's word bible says she which has begun a good work in you he said he is faithful let me show you something we are going to celebrate god revelation chapter 19 i just want to show you an attribute of god that will cause you never to doubt him again he said through faith men subdued the mouth of lions we have seen all kinds of testimonies ss changing to aa all kinds of supernatural manifestations what do you need to see again to let you know that god is more than faith hallelujah revelations 19 thank you lord jesus I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, I believe, kill every doubt from your life, next year will require men of faith. Learn to exercise your faith. Learn to exercise your faith. I'll never forget. In 2005, I was stranded in Kaduna. Could not come back to Zaria because I couldn't afford the transport fare. I was at Wyatt office. I had only, I think, 17 naira I left. And I, stood, I knew 17 naira would not bring me back to school. And then at a point I said, why do two zero? Let me enter the restaurant and at least eat with the money. So that I know that I'm full and then we'll find out what to do. Then I entered the restaurant and I, I didn't use all. I can't remember. I just somewhere, I, I just took some money. So there was totally no hope. And I said, Lord, you are faithful. And while I stood there, the Lord just spoke to me. A car stopped. Sorry, and the Lord said, enter. That's how I entered. I entered the car, I was smiling. As we were going, you know, I just got talking with a gentleman. And while I was talking with him, you know, just speaking with him, the next thing, the man driving, he was a golf. He asked, he said, Your payments. And then I didn't even, I didn't show like I didn't have money. The guy just brought out the money and paid paid my transport. He said, don't worry, I'll pay it. When he paid it, they dropped us at flyover. I didn't have money that would bring me back. I stood and the Lord said, enter the bus again. I entered the bus from flyover. God is my witness. I will not tell you that. I know that the word works. 
it's not just because I'm reading it here. He came and dropped me in front of the kids. And while we were in the bus, there was a lady, I didn't even know she knew me, she was at the back. I said, Lord, so what am I going to do now? I made up my mind that worse comes to worse, I'll just tell them to wait. I'll call somebody. But then I wanted to pay and the guy said, I should not worry, somebody had paid. And I turned back, it was a lady. The change that was left from Kaduna, that's what I came with. I'll never forget in 2004, we're going to church in the morning. I told Jamfa, I said, let's go. He said, where is our transport? I said, that's none of your business. Let's dress. We stood in front of North Gate. I said, Lord, we are ready to go to church and we take you by your word. Where is the money? And we stood and stood for over 20 minutes. There was nothing. And then the, there was someone in the car. Someone, a car that was parked there. wasn't even a Christian. And the Lord said, walk up to him and tell him you want to go to church. And that's all. And I walked up to him. I said, sir, we are on our way to church. He said, okay. He gave us more than it took. It will be enough in the church. When I was in the church, God said, sow it. I sold everything. We stood at the junction. And the Lord said, how are you going back? I mean, I just stood there. Jankra was asking me, I said, how are we going? I said, that's none of your business. And then I stood. The Lord said, begin to pray in the spirit. I was praying in tongues. Someone came and picked us. I used to stay in area B Z. That was where they dropped me. Let me tell you. The Bible says, Daniel 11:32. They that know their God shall be strong. He shall do exploits. The times we live in will require men of faith that can obey God to death. If you are ashamed of yourself and your reputation and you are doubting, will it work? Will it not work? I shared my story here when I was going to Port Harcourt. 800 Naira. He and I then, it was the members that raised the 800 Naira. And they were leading me as if I was, I was dead. They took me to PZ um, um, to uh, fly over. Well, I've never been to Port Harcourt. God only gave me an instruction. 800 Naira. And they were crying. I said, how will you survive? I said, no, come on. I've seen too much without God. I'll never forget. I went to Port Harcourt with 800 Naira. I dropped at number 23, Equerry Street. 800 Naira. The only bag I had, I began to pray in tongues and move. I said, Lord, you told me everywhere the sole of my feet steps. It has been given to me. I don't know where to stay. I don't know anybody, but I know you. And I live like a king. I live like royalty. See, it's a different thing to read theory. And just know, the Bible says, that which we have seen, that which we have had, some people are too innocent to worship God. You have not been in a situation that has required the word to work for you. Hallelujah. God has been most faithful. And, and I planned that we just worship God. But God needed to just tell me to emphasize. Even as we prepare for next year. The Lord has been showing me things. I've been having my retreat now preparing to receive from the Lord for next year. And the Lord has been showing me how that next year will require men of faith. People will perish like dead men next year. It will require men who have audacity in the spirit. That when men say there is a casting down, you will say there is a lift. That's why 2011 for us was like a year of rehearsals. Where God brings you to that point where you can trust. I refuse to doubt God. I refuse to say he's unfaithful. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll just worship him and pray. Revelations 19 verse 11. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat on the horse was called what? What's the name? It's not his attribute. It's his personality. He's called faithful. You know what faithfulness is? Faithfulness means you follow up your word to the latter. You are a man of integrity. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Amplified says, He is alert and active. Watching over his word. Watching over those who will dare to obey him. It's not just those who know the word. 
It's not just those who jump around with it. Those who can put it into practice. Who through faith subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Daniel, on account of his faith, was going to be thrown to the lion's den. That would have cost him his life. Can I tell you something in the spirit? Once you, by your faith, rise to a level where you have conquered a situation, authority is given to you to bring others that dimension of victory. If you've been trusting God for a child, and by faith you give birth, anyone you pray for for a child will receive that's how it is a law in the spirit that's why Jesus had to conquer death then he brought many sons into that glory hallelujah so before we sit down I'd like us to pray pair yourselves into two we're going to pray seriously we're going to pray and say Lord whatever it is that works on my mind and causes me not to doubt your word my eyes my ears my senses, situations and circumstances lift my faith tonight to a realm where I can trust you no matter what I see or hear come on lift up your voice and pray pray saints of God bring us to a place of faith where we don't trust men where we don't trust things of this earth. Our trust, our hope is in the Lord. Come on, pray. Pray. You will need it at home. You will need it for next year. The faith of the Son of God. Bring us to a point, O oh God, where we trust you. There is nothing too hard for you to do. There is nothing impossible. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Reka para kapose. Rein baba baba sepata. Reko sote paria kapa. Lord, we trust you. Lord, we trust you. You are faithful. Your word has been tried. Your word has been tested. Your word cannot fail. Your word cannot fail. Your word will not fail. Make sure you are praying. You are making investment in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next prayer point. We are going to pray and cast worry. I can't tell you how people depress themselves. They die of stroke, high blood pressure, so on and so forth. The Bible says, which among you by worrying can add one hair to his head. We are going to pray right now. There are several believers who are choked with worry. How will my life be? Will I get a job? Will I survive in Nigeria? Will I die? All kinds of useless worries that it will melt tonight as we praise up and trust God. The Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of good. God is not a wicked person. They are thoughts of good. Lift up your voice and say grace to overcome worries. I stop worrying. Not about financing. Not about my daily bread. Not about my life. Come on, pray. No worry. Not about marriage. Not about children. Not about education. I stop worrying. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is a good God. The hand of the root of it. That has started this work. That same hand. That same hand. That same hand. My God is faithful. My God is able. My God is mighty. God is faithful.
when you conquer these things, you will live long. You will walk in joy. Your worry will not add anything. Hallelujah. The depth of your understanding, hear me. The depth of your understanding of God's word is proportional to how much of faith you can have in Him. Are you listening to me? Let me give you an example. Please come by me, Everybody look. Look at this. Assuming you do not know me, you've never seen me. Alright? If I tell you, come, and I'll give you 100 naira. Come. You do not know me. You have never seen me. So if I instruct you to come, you will have to find out from someone who knows me. Whether or not I'm a joker or I'm serious with my life. I follow me. But when you come to a point where I have called you many times. And I have not disappointed you. The next time I say come. Even if you have to cross a river. You know that God is faithful. That's what trust is. The Bible says they that trust the Lord are as strong as Mount Zion. Unshakable. That you know that God is faithful. That you know that no matter what comes, God is faithful. That people are crying at home and saying, where can we afford your school fees for next session? And you're smiling, you're saying, Lord, I cannot pretend that I'm not seeing challenges, but I know your word is above it. And I choose. It's a choice. You can choose. I refuse to allow the things I see and the things I hear affect the integrity of God's word in my life. When you get to that point, you will become strange. You become a strange person because every man communicates from his level of reality. I tell you friends, God loves faithful people. Men and women who can stand and trust Him even at the point of death. Hallelujah. Please, please sit down. Hallelujah. This year has been a most exciting year to the glory of God. We have seen with our very eyes the word of God come to pass on the 31st of December last year sent a prophetic word how that God said for us that this year will be a season of the harvest and it didn't look like it but then we trusted the one who is called Alpha Omega He's not called Alpha and Omega. He's called Alpha and, I mean, Alpha Omega. He's at the end and at the beginning, all at the same time. All present. We began to see the power and the grace of God. We increase the blessings of the Lord upon our lives. And today, we are living testimonies that God is faithful. How many of you believe that God is faithful? We have seen the power of God in our midst. We have celebrated miracles. We have celebrated the hand of God. The fearful hand of God indeed. We have enjoyed the blessings of God. Supernatural things only by the grace and the spirit of God. The Friday meeting started in March. It's just a few months. 
And God has done great things to honor His Son in our lives. Hallelujah. This is the last service. I want to salute and congratulate as many people who could make it for this service. Hallelujah. After tonight, we'll be resuming on the 13th of January, 2012. We trust that it's a time when we'll refresh ourselves and build ourselves. But I want you to know that God has been faithful and He deserves to be worshipped. This is Christmas and for many people I know that the festivities there and all of that but then I don't have a Christmas message for you tonight. The only message I have is that God is faithful. God is ever faithful. God is ever faithful. Let me tell you, when God speaks a word, trust Him. Are you listening to me? Trust Him. The, the prosperity and success of a believer is tied to your faith. He said the just shall live. Not by his neighbor's faith, his faith. The just shall live. God has been, I love the song, that's the exact song. His mercy, his faithfulness, he has shown us mercy. He has blessed us. Many of us have seen supernatural miracles in our lives. God has transformed us by the power of his word. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness towards me. Your tender mercy. Your tender mercy. I see day after day. to come to a point in your life where the word of God rises from just being a spiritual book. Are you listening? Where the word of God becomes more than a religious book. Where the word of God becomes more than a theological book. You must come to a point where the word of God becomes your life. Where the word of God governs everything about your life. Where you live by the principles of this word. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Said my son pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. He said let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said they are life to those who find them and help their flesh. Deuteronomy chapter 28 shall come to pass, verse 1. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to observe and to do all that I command thee this day. If thou shalt diligently hearken, when you observe to do, then you will be exalted 
above all the nations and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He said, let this book of the Lord not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. He said, then shalt thou make your ways prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. The word of God. You must come to a point where the word of God becomes your life. Hallelujah. When we study the word of God, we understand the principles of the kingdom. How God designed this kingdom to function. And then when we understand, we can apply our hearts. I tell you something, friends. There is no situation in this life that the word of God does not have a solution. It may take a while, but the end thereof is joy. If you stake your life trusting the word of God, you will come up with joy and an unending testimony. Who through faith? Faith in what? The word of God. Men change the stories of their lives. We live in a generation where people give all kinds of excuses. The government is not this. They are not paying us scholarship. You better stop giving excuses and start taking the word of God seriously. My father is irresponsible. My mother is irresponsible. If they loved me, they would have been sending pocket money or they would have been doing this and that. I inherited this genotype or this blood group from my wicked parents. As if they didn't know they got married. Now, who through faith? You may not be able to do anything about yesterday, but you can do something about today. If there is something the word of God cannot do, then it means the word of God is not above all. I trust the word of God. This has been my message to people that we should take the word of God seriously. Beyond rhapsody of realities, beyond inspiring women, beyond every day with Jesus. Those, those um, devotionals are wonderful. But if that's all you are going to do, it will not equip you to be victorious in this life. You've got to invest in the word of God. Take it seriously. Hallelujah. Many people celebrate Jesus Christ and we talk about several things. Do you realize that the Jesus we celebrate is the same one the Bible calls the Word? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him were all things made. Without Him was nothing made that was made. In Him was light, and that light was the life of man. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. It's amazing how many people celebrate Christmas and we forget about Jesus Christ and we forget about His Word. We forget about His Word. What message did Jesus bring? Hallelujah. Take the Word of God seriously for you cannot have faith. Listen. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. It's not just some fake things. Faith doesn't just come by blindly hearing. Faith comes by understanding when you hear the word of God and you understand his principles hallelujah please give me this chair let me use it as an example now everybody watch me if I am seeing this chair for the first time if I am seeing it for the first time in my life I am seeing this chair for the first time and someone asks me to sit down on it I follow me now I will have doubt whether or not these tiny legs can hold the weight of my body. I follow me now. But by the time you begin to explain to me how this chair was made, do you understand? And tell me all the scientific processes that happened for this chair to come. I will not doubt it again. So you, you believe God to the degree to which you understand His ways. If you don't understand the, the Bible says, ye err, not knowing the scriptures. When you understand God and His ways. Hallelujah. 
For instance, when the Bible says, For we know that all things work together for good. You know, uh, to who? To them that love God. To them that are the cause. You see, when you understand the ways of God, then you'll be able to believe that verse. Otherwise, humanly speaking, it does not make sense. Why will God say all things work together for good? Because of three attributes that He possesses and can release in this realm. Number one is called His mercy. The mercy of God is one of His attributes that can make all things work together for good. When you know that God is merciful, it means that even when you willingly took yourself to a point where you should suffer some consequences, He will introduce His mercy to that situation. And the mercy of God vindicates you when it's obvious that you should be punished. On account of His mercy, He tells you that everything can work together for good. Number two, His restoration. God is able to restore, and I will restore to you, the years that the canker worm has eaten, the palmer worm. So that ability of God, are you following me now? It makes you understand when God says all things can work for your good. You know that even when you legally put yourself in that situation, the mercy of God can take you out. The restoration of God. Let me tell you what it means to restore. Two people again, very quickly please. Everybody watch these two people. Just, both of you stand here and just be walking. Walk gently and keep you walk at the same pace. Watch this. Just walk at the same pace. Keep moving. Keep moving. This guy is lagging behind. Just wait where you are. Wait where you are, Ono. Are you seeing this? This guy has experienced a retardation in his life. Is that correct? They were together and this one has moved ahead of him. The Bible says, I will restore. Now, all of you keep walking. Keep walking. This is not restoration. This is called progress. Hold on. Let me show you what restoration is. God picks you and takes you to that initial level so that when they look at you, there is no trace in your life that you ever experienced in that. That's what restoration is. Restoration is not the same as progress. The Bible says that the end of Job's life, God restored double. Because if he did not have that situation, that would have been his current status. But because of his predicament, he lagged by some years. And then God restored a double. That's why he said, I will restore sevenfold. He will not just restore onefold, sevenfold. Are you following me now? God bless you. The last attribute of God that makes all things work together for good is called His sovereignty. The ability of God to bump into this realm without any man's permission. There are times God just steps in like that. In the scripture we see the sovereignty of God. Hallelujah. It was the sovereignty of God that slammed Saul on the ground on his way to Damascus. Saul was not ready to repent. God took him by force. That attribute of God is still existing. That when God speaks a word and says, Oh no, I will bless you by this time tomorrow. He will engage his sovereignty. He will shake the heavens and the earth. Shake everything that needs to be shaken until that word comes to pass. Because his reputation is at stake. So he will shake the heavens and the earth. You see what? But if you do not understand these attributes of God, you cannot see why all things can work together. Are you following me now? He's faithful. When God says He's faithful, it's because He cannot lie. It's not that He does not. When He says man does not lie, it means it is within His power to lie. He just doesn't do it. If God calls this a car, it will become a car immediately because he cannot lie. Anything he prophesies will become. So even if he makes mistakes and says you are blessed, he can't take it back again. It will follow you. That's why he told Abraham, I swear by my name, in blessing, I will bless you. When God speaks a word, every spiritual principle begins to move in alignment with that word. When he calls the tree, in Mark eleven twenty three. Suddenly all the roots stop taking water. Every, every chemistry and action that would happen stopped until that tree dried. The word of God is very powerful. It created the heavens and the earth. 
So if you find a word for your life and you appropriate it by faith, you engage the angel, you engage the Holy Spirit, you engage different kinds of things. If God tells you strangers shall feed your flocks and you believe, you will only believe when you understand that another name for God is called the Father of Spirits. Have you ever studied that attribute of God? That means every spirit is subject to his name. At will he can begin to move the spirits of men, believers or unbelievers. He's called the Father of Spirits. So when God tells you that I will bless you and strangers will come, you don't need to know who those strangers are. Am I, are you getting blessed? When we know the ways of God, then we can trust Him. And you cannot know the ways of God until you search Scripture. Elisha, when the army came and attacked him, his servant said, Ah, Master. But Elijah, Elisha had walked with the Lord. And he was so confident about the ministry of angels. I've shared it here one time. We're coming back from Port Harcourt in a luxurious bus. And then armed robbers. You know, they just attacked, they put this barricade. Everybody was shouting the name of whatever I believe in God. And I was seated, God is my witness. I didn't shout, I didn't scream. One word came to my spirit. He will keep them in perfect peace whose minds are stayed towards him. And that was how our car, I've said this thing again and again, I hope you believe. Our car dropped those metallic things and nothing happened to our tire. The, the robbers didn't shoot. They didn't do anything. Here in our house, at least I have a witness. When someone who was sleeping and then a thief came in, and stole my laptop and ran out. By the time I woke up, I, I had that the guy had ran out. He said, well, Lord, two things will happen. You give me money to buy a new one or restore that one. And suddenly I was caught up and I saw an angel and this is all he did to me. And then he left. About seven hours later, my laptop was back on my table. See, let me tell you something. All things are possible, not for everybody. You can be dying in a situation and somebody walk and pass. A, the, the ship was killing others and Jesus was walking on it. He was walking on the water. The ship was boisterous and Jesus was sleeping in a pillow. The depth of your understanding of the ways of God is what will give you confidence. As a ministry, we have trusted totally on God for everything for our finances for the word of God and God has confirmed our words by his grace because I found it in the word of God the Bible says who confirmed the words of his messengers you've got to stay with the word of God it's amazing how people pack up their Bibles and throw it and then we are running looking for the things that only the word of God can give us. If we spend half the time we are running and looking for things in the word of God. Looking for money, looking for fame, looking for power, looking for anointing. If we can spend that time and stay with God's word. And allow ourselves to be educated enough to understand his ways. Then we will reign as kings in this life. Hallelujah. So as we round up for this year, I'd like you to know that there's one central message God is pressing. It's not enough for you to just gather all the tapes and then go home and laugh. Just put on your TV and watch the news for 30 minutes. You'll be discouraged and just cover yourself with blanket. Whether it's football, whether it's sports, whatever. If it's in the church setting, people are losing their integrity scandals with this and that and that trouble if you've seen sports this person is dying i mean the the the, the, 
prime minister of North Korea just died a few days. All kinds of chaos. America is properly in a recession right now. I don't know what the Nigerians living there are going to do. Because it's not about location, it's about the world. And Isaac sowed in that land where there was famine and reaped that same year and hundredfold. And God prospered him. He worked strong and he moved forward. It's about the word of God. If you can hold on to the word of God, it will be a light to your path. He says, the entrance of your, thy word giveth light and understanding to the sin. If there's any message I want you to wrap up this year with, is to come to a point where you take the word of God seriously. Can I tell you something? This life will test the deposit of the word of God in you. Don't let anybody fool you. You will be tested in every area where you have gotten the word of God. The Bible says, if your strength fails you in the day of battle, then your strength is small. Many of us who want to be leaders, times will come. All of us are going to be uh, fathers and mothers. You know, we have this illusion that we sit down and we just see a nice life and then you're working in the office, suddenly you become the CEO, the director. You see, in your imagination is very, very correct. But outside of the word of God, it's not as easy as that. Ask our parents. Only the word of God can give you audacity in this wicked world that we live in. Are you listening to me? It takes only the word of God. You can get a job today and somebody gets up and decides for no reason not to like you. Reasons you cannot explain. Now you thought it was all about getting jobs. Then you hear that the person is going to a meeting God. You say, why? You say, I just hate you. Welcome to the world of wicked people. That's why the Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all. He said, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. The deposit of God's word. It make you a man of faith and a woman of faith. Where you can hold on to God and you can trust the word of God. And say, Lord, I trust you. I live by your ways. For instance, we just finished a series on, on, on our finances. The issue of tithing. I struggled with tithing for years until God gave me a revelation. I was still preaching. I was preaching it, but I wasn't consistent. Because honestly speaking, sometimes it didn't make sense to me why God would require 10%. Sometimes I ate it, I say, Lord, I promise when the next one comes, I'll give to it, I'll make up. But I came to a point where I cried. I said, God, I'm doing this thing religiously. Anything you do religiously, it will not bless you. Because you will not do it out of understanding. And when there is no understanding, there's no life, there's no performance. And God brought me to a point where I saw the disaster I was doing to myself. And then I repented. I repented once and for all. Today, God tells me, empty your account. Let me tell you something. You see how my teeth is open? That's how I'm going to run. Run and, and, and pack everything I need. Ah, Josh, then what will happen? <laughs> you don't know who God is, that's why. If you know I'm a millionaire and I say, Bamishé, I want to bless you tomorrow, but I want to see an empty account. Before I finish the account, you run to the bank and say, uh, Cashier, withdraw everything. The person says, Are you okay? Say, Withdraw everything. Don't ask me useless questions. How come without God? When God says, I want to bless you. I want to bless you. When God says, it's possible for you to live in hell. I, I share it here, if not because of the word of God for our hell. would have broken down. There is no colonial week that you have not seen me or any of the ministers come on grounds of hell challenges. We are not pretending these things. You can't pretend in the presence of people. Are you following me? If the word is not working, one day it will show. You can't pretend it. I, I travel and sometimes I come back when we used to have the Sunday meetings, if you remember. 
then we are not flying on road. Sometimes you come back in the night and you stand for hours only to sleep as my brother. There are times that for almost three days in a stretch, I've really not slept. Never for once. Come and meet me lying down and shivering and saying this. Because the Bible says if that same spirit that resurrected Christ from the dead lives in my mortal body, that same spirit. I used to be oppressed by demons. I've shared my story. I mean, when I was in 100 level, when I was in 100 level, I used to be oppressed by demons. I was staying in vision. I would have visions and they would enter my room. Spirit. It was, it was a disaster. I didn't want the night to come. One day I got angry and I stayed with God's word. Praying and fasting. That's always, you need to take some things seriously. When you are just massaging problems and say, okay, let's, let's see how we figure it out. It's not like that. Bible says, woe to them who are ease in Zion. It takes a dissatisfaction to change your life. Are you following me? And I, I went to court. Then there was a Lontanese court. I prayed and while I was praying, God sent a light to my spirit. God is my witness. I used to hang a black bag. I ran with that bag to PZ and I stood in front of the room. I shouted. I said, that spirit that comes, you are invited this night. I'm specially inviting you. You see, light gives you audacity. From that day till today, ask my brother, if I'm willing to sleep, it doesn't take me five minutes and I'm gone. There's no time, there's no meditation, there's no sleeplessness, there's no less fact. No, no, no. Because I exhaust myself to the point that God gives me sleep to rest. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm sharing? You know, it's easy for many people to see you getting blessed and they say, Ah, you know a man of God. How many people are in Koinonia? Every Sunday somebody was drink. I give Christ, Jerry. Was I born with a mic on my hand? The word of God was not written for ministers. It was written for anybody who takes God and his way seriously. Hallelujah. Believe the word of God. Believe the word of God. Here in our midst, we have been hearing testimonies of people whose lives have changed. I shared with you my mom's story. How that things were not working. My mom was flat. I mean, they were not paying them salary. And all of these challenges, my mom sat with me and cried one day and said, Is this how my life will be? And I told her, I said, I'm going to teach you some kingdom principles. Will you receive? She said, Yes. And I taught her certain things. Today, by the grace of God, my mom is a proud owner of a flourishing poultry farm, receiving favor from all kinds of people, including myself. Hallelujah. They looked at Jesus and said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But when you stay with the word of God, you will surprise people. The word of God will turn you into a wonder. The word of God will make you... And you know what? Because you have gone through too much. When you get to that point, you will not but give him the glory. There's no time to begin to make a name for yourself. How many of us believe the word of God in this place? Truly, I tell you something. If we have not brought you this year to a point where you believe God's word, then we have failed. Are you following me now? No matter, even if we, we recorded one million people, and then we cannot bring the average believer to a point where you esteem and value God's word, we have not helped anybody. Doesn't matter how many free bus transports we organize. The secret of victory in this life is the word of God. Believe the written word. Believe the spoken word. Whether directly by God or through his vessels. You know, sometimes this familiarity has killed a lot of people. I love what my brother said. The Bible says Jesus went to his hometown and could not do many miracles. Why? Because they called him the carpenter's son. He said, is this not the carpenter's son? Are this not his brethren? Bishop Oyedeko says something I love so much. He said, the value you place on a person determines the virtue that will flow to you. 
I remember Reverend Dr. Uma Ufai, something happened. His brother, his brother and one of the friends, they were sick. And then the brother told, um, the brother, the friend told the brother, he said, please give me your brother's number. That's Uma Ufai. He said, I want to call him for prayer. And then he laughed. He said, my brother, you mean my brother? He said, yes. And that other guy was healed. And Uma Ufai's brother remained in his sickness there because he was still looking at his brother. Hallelujah. I've shared with you a, a story here that touched me. A woman, a, a man and, and his wife, he was married. I follow me now. True life story. And um, things were not working well in their family. He was a preacher. But he was preaching the word. Teaching men the principles of the kingdom. But then things were not working. I mean, they were being strangled financially. And then one day while he was speaking, his wife got up and went out of the church. And he was worried. He was like, what kind of thing is this? You know, when he finished everything, he rushed home. And then he sat at a table, you know, waiting for her to serve him. And he noticed that she packaged the food in a very strange way. It wasn't the usual way. She took a special tray, you know that tray that you hide only for visitors then he opened the drawer and bring it out she brought it out brought the plate and he was just watching when she served him she served it as though it wasn't her husband and then she knelt down and said something she said servant of god my family is in a financial crisis pray for me that was her husband have you seen that revelation she turned to him and said ah. And he said, suddenly, the power of God came on him. This one was switching dimension. This one is now the minister. He said, and he laid hands on her. This is the husband. The woman said, I can't sit down in the church and I'm watching people shouting amen. And I'm saying it's my husband and things are not working. We are dying here. Our children are crying. He said, no, I, I, I must recognize the difference. And he prayed and according to him he said people began to sow people started sowing and blessing them. he said he loved his wife as though he had never loved her again uh, before wisdom where you learn to value vessels you see let me tell you something the anointing of God is a very dangerous thing it responds to the demand you place on it hallelujah there are many things God has blessed us with. Every time I pray to God, I say, Lord, I want to be a living expression of everything you called us to do and to be. Paul said, let it not be that haven't preached, I myself will become a castaway. We have taken our time to share some of the things that God has blessed us with as a ministry to the end that everyone can tap and say, Lord, I have no doubt I believe it. Hallelujah. I believe the word of God. And as we prepare to go to our various homes and our families, I'd like you to cultivate the attitude of staying with the word of God as a family, as individuals. Don't go home and then just be like a Jessica about the word. You say, I don't want to look fanatic. You think so? Take the word of God seriously. It reminds me when, when I was traveling to South Africa we were in the plane and a white man was sitting by my side and he started talking. He was telling me all the beer that he likes. I mean, no respect. He didn't even ask whether I was a Christian or not. Isn't it amazing how bold unbelievers are? He said, ah, him, that he likes. He mentioned the beer and then he said, which one is my own? And then uh, I didn't just say, no, 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 I don't take beer. No, no, no. I used the opportunity. He gave me an opportunity. And when I shared with him about the kingdom, we didn't talk again. He landed. But the most important thing is that the message has been communicated. If someone tells you, come and drink, and I say, no, no, I don't drink, you have not blessed the person. Do you understand? Use the opportunity and say, I belong to a kingdom. And in every kingdom, we are bounded by principles. And the, the principle that governs my kingdom does not permit me to function like this. You are now ministering to the person. Hallelujah. 
Someone says, come and steal. He say, no, I don't like it. That means under pressure you can do it. But when, when you let the person know that this is, this is not about like or not like, you are bounded as a love slave to live by the principles of the world. Hallelujah. The final thing I'm going to do before we pray is I want to speak certain prophetic blessings. Numbers chapter 6. Now it was the principle of the nation of Israel. God taught them that Moses, Aaron, Joshua would always take our time to speak God's blessings over people. Do you understand? We call it... Uh, People call it benediction. People call it all kinds of theological names. And there was a particular blessing that Aaron was instructed to speak unto the people. And God made a vow with himself that every time that blessing is released upon the people, he will see to it that they walk in that blessing. Can we look at it very quickly? We'll soon pray and be out of here. Number 6 verse 22. Number 6 verse 22. Are you there? And the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son saying, In this way ye shall bless the children of Israel. Look up. God, God is, when God tells you how to do a thing, just do it his way. I follow me. God is saying, this is how I have chosen that you bless the nation of Israel. And you know that spiritually we are the Israel of God. In Christ. Galatians 3.29 Hallelujah. He said, and if ye be in Christ, if ye are Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. He says, saying unto them, 24, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. He said, The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give ye peace. Listen to verse 27. He said, And they shall put my name, they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. God says, Every time you speak this, is a code in the spirit it's equivalent to putting my name upon every one of the people and it will compel me to bless them isn't it amazing how we speak this in church and then we don't speak it out of light and revelation powerful prophetic blessings he said the Lord bless thee and then the Lord keep thee keep thee from falling keep thee from accidents Keep thee from danger. Keep thee from the company of wicked and unreasonable people. He said the Lord makes his face shine upon thee. That's what we call favor in this realm. When the favor of, when the face of God shines upon you. That's what favor is. The word favor means to cause a, to your face to shine upon another for good. So when he says the Lord causes his face to shine upon thee. It means let the Lord lavish you with favor. He said, and be gracious unto you. Grace, unmerited access, opening you up to realms you do not qualify to enter. He said, may God bring you to that point. Hallelujah. He said, may the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give ye peace. The word peace there is not just talking about quietness and stillness. It means salvation, healing, the Greek is soteria. Hallelujah. The same word that was converted salvation. Peace, long life, health, blessings, everything. And so I'm going to be speaking that blessing upon us right now. And then I'll speak Deuteronomy 28. And then we'll pray and we're done. Can we rise up on our feet? In one minute I'd like you to say, Lord, as these words come... I believe them. I receive them. 
I receive them. I receive them. I sense the anointing of the Spirit strong. Strong. Receive them for your loved ones. Receive them for your situation. Believe me, it will surprise you. For many of you, that God has spoken things to and you have not seen a manifestation yet. The year has not finished though. God is still faithful. The year has not finished. The year has not finished. In one minute, say, Lord, I release my faith. I release my faith. Over your health. Over your family and children. Over your finances. Over your ministry. Over your education. Over your relationship. Over marriage. 2011 has not finished. 2011 has not finished. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that as I begin to declare the prophetic blessings, I pray that you confirm your word with instant miracles, instant blessings, instant signs and wonders. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up His countenance upon thee and give thee peace in the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy 28, quickly. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Are you ready now? Deuteronomy 28. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the field. Blessed is the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your cattle, and the increase of your cows and the flock of that sheep. Blessed is your basket and your kneading trough. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. And blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies who rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command a blessing upon your storehouse. And in all that thou settest thy hands to do, the Lord shall bless thee in the land that he has given you. The Lord shall establish you. The Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. In the fruit of your body. Verse 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. The heaven to give rain unto thy land in season. And to bless all the work of your head. And thou shalt lend to many. And shall not borrow. The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath. Do you believe these words? I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I receive them. 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 Hallelujah. I receive them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brother, please stop him. Come. Hear what the Lord says unto you. The Lord says, I should tell you that He's connecting you with a business idea. And in 21 days it shall come to pass. That's what the Lord is saying. That he will cause, listen, 
the Lord will cause honor to come upon your life in a way that you have never seen. That's what the Lord says, that you will make your father proud, that he will honor you even in the seminary, even in the, the, the church. He will honor you. He will honor you. He will bring you. I see you meeting someone whose name is Stephen. That's what I'm saying, Stephen. And the Lord is saying he will bring great honor unto you. Hallelujah. The word of God. The word of God. God is very faithful. Ever faithful. Come. Next year for you will be a year of great laughter. From January. That's what God is saying. From January. God Himself will be announcing you, even by His Spirit. By His Spirit. Mr. Yos, please come. For you will not need to labor again, the Lord says, as you tell you, that He's bringing you into a place of rest. That's what the Lord says, as you tell you. For you will not need to labor again. He's bringing you into a place of rest. Into a place of rest. Into a place of rest. There's someone with the name Victoria. Victoria. Hearing a name Victoria. Victoria. Who is that? There's a Victoria here. And the Lord has a word for you, Victoria. The Lord says, I have seen your tears. And He says, I shall announce to you that it's time to honor your family. Your family will experience an honor of the Spirit. A great great honor of the spirit great honor of the spirit the Lord says I should tell you that he's bringing great honor great honor into your life hallelujah I'm Pastor Williams Dr. Come sweeter this prophecy is for the family but I don't know why the Lord says I should call her come For I see a separation that the Lord brings to the family to honor the family. And the Lord said, I should just hold that. This is what I saw and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. The Lord is going to bring great honor. And I don't know what it is, but I hear my spirit restoration. I hear great restoration. In fact, that's exactly what I'm hearing. Great restoration. Great restoration. That's what I hear my spirit. Great restoration. Name of Jesus. Sam, come. The Lord is going to cause men, you will enter into a dimension of favor as you have never seen. Favor that will scare you, favor that will shock you because of the faithfulness. Your faithfulness and your committer. Your faithfulness and your committer. Manasseh, the Lord says for me to tell you access with kings. Access with kings. That's what I hear in my spirit. Access with kings. Next year will be a tremendous time of access, supernatural access, things that you wouldn't have gotten by walking because of your faithfulness towards God. Access with kings. God will connect you with kings. I see military men. I see a major general that God will connect you with. God will connect you beginning from the barrack. God will connect you with people in ministries uh, and He will connect you with several people. Access with kings. That's what God is going to give you distinguish you even by his spirit hallelujah please come sir you on black yes you please come lord says i should tell you it's not by power it's not by might he says i don't know what it is but it's the lord says it's going to happen next year and i don't know what it is but i'm seeing may that's what I'm seeing on you. M-A-Y. May. Whatever it is, I have no idea what I'm doing. I hope it makes sense to you. Just go and write it. The Lord will perform His work. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know. Um, there's someone here. The meaning of your name. 
I'm not really getting it very well, but it has to do with running. Whether running or moving, there's someone, the meaning of your name. Whether to run and get, you know, to move. That's I'm getting an interpretation like that. Who is that person? You're a guy. You are not a lady. Where is the person? I'm sure of what I'm hearing. Okay, come. Come. What's the meaning of your name? To run. To walk. Come. And the Lord says, I should tell you that next year you will start living the reality of what your name means. Are you listening to me? That you will start living the reality. I had run. Run. That's what, that's what, that's what God is doing. And, and God has given me. Do you believe in instructions? Come and stand here. You are going to run right to that wall and come back. Just do what I'm telling you to do. The way you run like this, this is exactly how you are going to run next year. Set the speed. Hallelujah. Debbie. I just saw a padlock over you opened. That's what I saw. A padlock opened. God just showed me a padlock and it was opened. Uh, I believe that that means God is opening things in your life that probably have been closed. I saw a padlock over you being opened. That's what God is showing you. Come if I hear my spirit the blessings of Melchizedek. Look at me. Look at me. Go and read about Melchizedek. You don't know who Melchizedek is. Melchizedek is. Your life is similar to him. No father, no mother. You are in that situation now. And the Lord says, I should tell you, He's releasing the blessing of Melchizedek. Blessing. Sorry, just leave the keyboard and come in one minute. Sorry, we'll be out of here. One minute. And the Lord says, I should tell you, um, next year, uh, I don't know what I'm seeing, but I'm seeing like a treasure chest. And it's been opened over you. And then the Lord is bringing great increase and multiplication to you by His Spirit. For you have suffered many things this year and the Lord is bringing you great restoration. Great restoration. Great restoration. Great restoration. Um, philosopher, please, I'd like you to call that lady behind. Yes, my dear, come. God says I should tell you he's ever faithful ever, ever faithful. Ever faithful. And that He will not forget you. Are you listening to me? The Lord is speaking to you and He's saying He will not forget you. Can a woman forget her suckling child? That's what the Lord says for me to tell you. Can a woman forget her suckling child? The Lord says I should tell you He has seen your tears. And then He's going to bless you. Beyond your imagination. Beyond your imagination. And the Lord has said I should tell you that the delay, delay is for your good. That delay is for your good. Hallelujah. Um, Joseph, do we have anybody with the name Joseph? Yes, no, this is the person. Where do you live? You live in Paladin. The house you are staying is your own. It's not your own. Look at me. You believe, I, I don't mean you, your family. Your family stays in Paladin. God wants to give your family a property of their own. Do you believe this? You believe this? Next year. You believe it? 
you have it in the name of Jesus. Go and tell your parents. And next year you will own property. Don't think about how it will happen. Bamisha, I see the Lord restoring your father. He has lost a lot. Come. He has lost a lot. And uh, I see God also saying, I should tell you, that He's going to give you direction and precision. You've been praying for direction. You have been praying for direction again and again. Whether to get a job, go into ministry, you have been thinking about too many things. Calm down. The Lord says He's going to give you direction and precision. He's giving you direction and He's giving you precision. Direction and precision. Hallelujah. Please come, um, Christabel, and any member of your family that is here, please will be out of here. I see that you came with members of your family. Come. And three things the Lord is saying. Number one, the Lord says, I should tell you that the Egyptians that you see today, you will not see them again. And then I hear that um, the plague of shame is taking over your family. That's what the Lord says. I should tell you, the plague of shame is taking over your family. And then, um, look at me. Who is sick in your family? Seriously sick? What's wrong? Yes, I see someone that uh, is sick. Does it have anything to do with surgery? It has something to do with surgery. The surgery will not hold. The Lord is bringing blessings to the family. Believe it. Believe it. The surgery will not hold. It's by the Spirit of God. And then, I don't know what is it about you, but hold my hands. The Lord is going to bring you favor in a way that you have never seen. The Lord will bring you favor, supernatural favor, even by the Spirit of God. Favor by the Spirit of God. Of Jesus Christ, we're going to pray just the scriptures of God out of time. We're going to speak prophetic blessings. You hold the hands of someone and speak the word of God, speak the word of God over your life and the life of that person. We'll do that in the next five minutes and then we'll be out of here. You're going to speak the word of God. The Bible says, When men say there is a casting down. You will say there is a lifting up. The Bible says, arise and shine. Are you ready to speak God's word? Lift up your voice and begin to prophesy. Come on, prophesy. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I choose life. There's no death. There's no death. Pray. No one will take your life. No plans of Satan will thwart your life and destiny. Pray. I am the blessed of the Lord. I am the blessed of the Lord. I am the blessed of the Lord. The blessing is upon me. The blessing is upon me. Causing the garden of Eden to be reproduced in my life. I am blessed in the city. Blessed in the country. Sheba ba 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 ba. Rapa kapa reke poso pari Prophesy, speak to yourself. Hareke poso tobaria. Rapa kapo soto bakari ere rebos. Embra teka safari adabos. Le kapari akabasa. Mam prakaba baba ba. Rakaba baba. I arise. I shine. For my light is come, and the glory of the Lord is written upon me. The glory of the Lord 
is risen upon you. Ask God to do something for you. Before 2011, wrap up. Pray. Say, Lord, give me a miracle. I'd like you to demand something. Demand something from God. Demand something from God. Before the year runs out, I don't care what it is. I don't care how impossible it is. Say, Lord, do this for me. Lord, we believe. Lord, we believe. We will end the year with joy. We will end the year with laughter. You're changing the stories of men. Proving that your word is alive. Proving that your word works. Proving that you are faithful. Come on, pray. Say, I call on heaven over this request for myself, for my family. I receive it by faith. We release financial miracles before the end of 2011. I'm prophesying to you. We cancel death. Cancel death by the Spirit. We release miracles of healing, supernatural miracles of healing, miracles of favor, miracles of relationships. Miracles in your spiritual life. I command over your family that before 2011 ends, I release miracles, miracles in your family, in your family. Let the crying stop before the year runs out. Let the crying stop. I invoke the power of the Spirit. Let the Christ come. Let joy come. I prophesy joy. I prophesy Jesus. I prophesy greatness. I prophesy the hand of God over your family, over their finances, over their health. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. SS, change to AA in your family. I change blood group. I change genotype. I release source of favor. Source of favor. Source of increase. Source of breaking. Broken homes. Come back in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Finally, as you go, realize that you are the light. You are not the one under situations and circumstances. He that cometh from above is above all. Do not act like you are under. Every time there is a challenge, speak God's word. I tell you, God will perform His word. As you go home and your loved ones tell you of all the challenges, lock yourself. Generate energy as you pray in the spirit. Activate the workings of the spirit and begin to make decrees. Make decrees. Go home, organize Bible study sessions and teach your loved ones the principles of God's word that you know. Hallelujah. I declare no accident for those of you who are traveling. No accident. No religious crisis and any manipulation of Satan in the name of Jesus. Everything that wants to bring pain and sorrow, I command that it is far from your dwelling in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to walk up to 10 people and congratulate them. Do it like you know you got something. Walk up to 10 people. 
Let's go to your life.